Hi guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. Uh, so last week I released a video on step-by-step -step guide to dockerize your uh, application running on your uh, local machine, uh, how to test it in your local machine using uh, Docker desktop, and then how to uh, migrate it uh, to the cloud. So we used uh, AWS EKS for that, and then uh, how to scale it, how to expose it using load balancer, etc. Uh, so check that out if you're interested, I'm gonna give the link up top. However, a lot of you asked me after this video that, Raj, how are you creating the EKS cluster? I don't see you going to console or anything. So in this video, I'm gonna go over different ways to create an EKS cluster. Uh, then I'm going to talk about a very handy way to create EKS cluster. Like if you want to spin up a cluster, test something, etc. So this should be the way. And then uh, as always, we'll end up with the demo. Uh, timestamps are given for your viewing convenience. And as always, uh, if you like this video, if you found this video useful, uh, click that like button, click subscribe, uh, share, share these videos and help this channel grow. All right, with that being said, let's get started. So on the left, this is you, the almighty user. And on the right is our uh, EKS cluster. So let's see which ways uh, we can spin up this cluster. Uh, so there's always AWS console. You can log into AWS console and uh, spin up a cluster. Uh, you can always code CloudFormation and run it as a CloudFormation template, uh, which will spin up the EKS cluster. Next option is AWS CLI. So using AWS CLI commands, you can uh, spin up EKS cluster and do all kinds of stuff. And the number four is EKS CTL CLI. Uh, so I'm gonna go through this. Thing is, if you want to uh, spin up an EKS cluster from console or CLI or CloudFormation, uh, you actually have to do a lot of stuff uh, because uh, certain scenarios, some subnets need to be private, some new routing rules needs to be set. In some cases, a new VPC needs to be created. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff. Uh, but this EKS CTL is a CLI tool. Uh, it's an open source tool uh, where you can give one command and it will do all the necessary steps uh, in the background and spin up your EKS cluster. So there's one more way to spin up, which is quite important. Uh, so that is DevOps tools, right? Because in actual uh, production environment, uh, you won't have access to any terminal or even the console. So you really cannot go to console and submit CloudFormation or go to console and spin up EKS directly. Uh, so you need to automate this whole process. So using DevOps tools like Jenkins or Code Pipeline, uh, you can automate this CloudFormation or AWS CLI or EKS CTL CLI um, and spin up EKS. Uh, for your testing and uh, trying out purposes, EKS CTL is the easiest way. Uh, so let's take a deeper look at this EKS CTL. Uh, so what is EKS CTL? Uh, it is a CLI tool for creating clusters on EKS. Uh, so you can think of, think of it as you go to a terminal, you, you type a command, press enter, and it brings up a EKS cluster. This is actually easier than console, for real. <laughs> so the reason is it abstracts lots of stuff. Uh, so let's say you want to create an EKS cluster with the managed node group, or you want to uh, create an EKS cluster for Fargate. So if you want to do that using console, uh, you have to do multiple things. Like first, let's say for Fargate, you, you have to create an EKS cluster, and then uh, you have to go create a Fargate profile and Fargate only works with the private subnet currently. Uh, so it has to make sure that all your subnets or the subnets you are going to use for the Fargate uh, is uh, private, else it's gonna fail, which is a really pain in the butt because you, at this point you have already created the cluster, then you try to create Fargate profile and it's gonna fail. Uh, for regular EKS cluster, uh, if you want to create a node group, uh, if you want to do that from your console, then you have to go through multiple uh, consoles in multiple clicks and multiple screens. And it also does a lot of things behind the scenes. 
uh, such as if a new VPC needs to be created, new subnet, new security group, uh, routing tables, all that stuff. Uh, it actually submits a CloudFormation and when you do the demo, you will see how much uh, stuff it actually abstracts from you. It makes your life really easy. Uh, so you, the almighty uh, user, will submit a command, something like EKSCTL create cluster, and then it's gonna bring up the EKS cluster. So <laughs> I know I put this EKS create cluster in here, uh, but please don't uh, submit it. Uh, why? Because I'm gonna show you in the next screen. Uh, so these are some commands. So if you type in EKSCTL create cluster and submit, it is gonna create EKS. However, it's gonna <laughs> create EKS with two m5.large uh, worker nodes. And m5.large EC2 does not fall under free tier and you have to uh, pay for it. So what do you do? So generally, uh, this is the command I use. So ekctl create cluster and then dash dash name, you can give a name to your EKS cluster and then dash dash version, you can specify which Kubernetes version you want to run in your EKS. And then this node type field, dash dash node type, this is where you can put in the instance type that you want to use. Uh, so I'm gonna put t3.micro because they are under free tier and then dash dash nodes two, that means it will spin up two worker nodes. Uh, so if you want one worker nodes, you make this one. And if you want three, you put this three, you, you got the idea. So what it does, create a case cluster with Kubernetes version 1.15 with two T3 micro nodes. So next command is also uh, quite commonly used. Uh, so on top of what this command is doing, so this command has the node group name and also dash dash manage. What it does that uh, EKS actually manages your worker nodes as part of managed node group. Okay, and the uh, last command that is used a lot is ekctl create cluster dash dash name, give a name. Until this point, everything is same uh, with this command. But then we have this dash dash uh, forget. Uh, so what it does is uh, not only it's gonna spin up the EKS cluster, the control plane, it's also gonna create a Fargate profile, uh, which you can uh, use from get go to deploy your pods as Fargate. So what are some things that uh, you can do with the EKSCTL? Uh, so these commands I just put for the create, uh, but there's a lot more to EKSCTL than just creating the cluster. Uh, so you can create, get, list, and delete uh, clusters with EKSCTL. Uh, you can create, drain, and delete node groups. Uh, you can scale a node group, and uh, you can update a cluster. You can use custom AMIs, configure VPC networking, and a bunch of the other stuff. Uh, so one thing to note that EKSCTL works only on EKS cluster. Uh, there are different ways to run Kubernetes, right? Because you can run Kubernetes on EC2, you can run Kubernetes on on-prem, uh, you can run Kubernetes on a Google Container Engine. EKSCTL won't work on that. As the name says, it is only for EKS. Uh, why I am saying you guys and girls this? Uh, because there's another very popular command called kubectl. Um, sometimes people get confused between kubectl and EKSCTL. Uh, so kubectl works on all Kubernetes cluster, but EKSCTL works only on EKS cluster. All right, with that, uh, let's jump into a demo. Uh, so to uh, start using EKSCTL, first you do have to install it. Uh, so you can just Google install EKSCTL, and the first link should be from uh, AWS. And if you click it, uh, it's gonna give you the instructions. Uh, so first you have to have a kubectl, uh, and then uh, you can install EKSCTL, and you can click this link here, and it's gonna give you the instructions to install in Mac, uh, Linux, and Windows. So I, uh, I'm not gonna show you these steps because they're pretty uh, boring. You can just follow the guide. I'll give the link of the installation guide in the description. So I have the EKSCTL installed, and you also have to configure uh, AWS CLI, right? So you should have AWS CLI installed. I'm using Visual Studio Code. So if I run AWS configure, 
So you can see uh, my AWS CLI is all set, pointing to US West 2. So when I run my EKSCTL command, uh, it is gonna create the EKS cluster uh, in this account and this uh, Oregon region or US West 2 uh, because how I configured my AWS CLI. So if I go to uh, my AWS console and open up EKS, go to Elastic Kubernetes Service, and then click clusters on the left under Amazon EKS. So I don't have any cluster. Uh, so let's go back to Visual Studio Code and then uh, create a cluster using EKSCTL. Okay, and now we are going to run EKSCTL create cluster does dash name YouTube EKS cluster. We can skip the version uh, because it will just pick up the latest version. But the important part is this node type and then we'll give t3.micro and then finally we want two nodes. All right, let's press enter. So you can see it submitted bunch of cloud formation. So if I go back to AWS console, let's go to cloud formation. There we go. You can see this EKSCTL YouTube EKS cluster uh, dash cluster stack is in progress and it is gonna create bunch of stuff. Internet gateway, NAT IP, service role, VPC, etc. It is gonna take few minutes uh, for the cluster to come up. So I'm gonna pause the video and come back once the cluster is up and running. All right, our CloudFormation is all up and running. It actually uh, submitted two stacks. Uh, you can see these two stacks. And if you go to the resources, you can see there's a lot going on behind the scenes, uh, which CTL takes care of. If you try to do this using console, there is a little bit of pain. Another neat thing about EKSCTL is you can actually get the CloudFormation template. It's showing in the text form. That's why it's all messed up format wise. But it actually gives you the CloudFormation template. So if you want to run something with the template, uh, that, that's fine too. You can copy paste and get started from here. Okay, so back to Visual Studio Code, you can see this says EKS cluster, YouTube EKS cluster in this region is ready. And as part of EKSCTL, it also creates uh, the kube config file. So that's how it knows when you put a kubectl command, which cluster to go to. Let's go back to the console. Let's go back to EKS again, click clusters. And now you can see we have this YouTube EKS cluster with status active up and running. So if you click this, uh, it's gonna give you a little bit more info. Uh, it says no nodes because it only shows uh, managed uh, node groups. But if you go to uh, EC2, so let's type EC2, we should see the instances uh, up and running. All right, so you can see YouTube EKS cluster. There are two instances running, T3 micro, and these two instances are being uh, worked as the worker plan. So if I go to tags, you can see the stack name uh, is the EKSCTL YouTube cluster stack name. So basically these two EC2 got created from the EKSCTL command. And lastly, if we go back to the Visual Studio code and type kubectl get all dash a, uh, this kubectl commands is basically uh, going and running against this EKS cluster. The very last thing I want to show you guys and girls is how to delete the cluster because I don't want you guys and girls to keep it running even if you are not using it, uh, you will incur charges. Uh, because remember the EKS control plan uh, costs 10 cents per hour and also the T3 micro free tier will expire. Uh, so to get all the EKS clusters, uh, you have to run uh, a command ekstl get clusters and it will give you all the running EKS clusters. If you have more than one, it's gonna show you. And then to delete, you simply run ekstl delete cluster and dash dash name, and then you simply uh, copy paste the name and pass the name. 
uh, press enter and that will go delete all the resources, all the CloudFormation stack and the EKS cluster. Uh, so this is how you can spin up EKS cluster with single command, uh, test your deployment, uh, test your container, uh, run different stuff and then delete using ekstl command. This is definitely the easiest way to spin up and test EKS cluster. All right, guys and girls, that is the video. Uh, if you like the video, let me know if you have any questions or concerns in the comment section. Uh, like, subscribe, do all the YouTube stuff. Uh, if you want to support me a little bit even more and if you want to take a full course, I do have a full EKS course uh, with good feedback on Udemy. Check it out. I'll give the link in the description. Uh, but anyway, that's it for this week. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.